Back for Blood has an intriguing system for keeping replays fresh. We're going to be watching Loki earlier than expected. And I've got some thoughts on Resident Evil Village. All that and the latest in everything cool today in The Rundown. Hey, welcome to The Rundown. My name is Victor Lucas, and it is my absolute honor to help bring you the latest in everything cool. Today's episode is going out to my buddy Blair Farrell, who sent me a copy of Rocket Knight Adventures for the Sega Genesis, which is a game that I have been wanting to play for a very long time, and I can't wait to do that. All right, let's get started with Blair's Rundown. We've got uh, an incredibly bloody new trailer for Bla Back for Blood, so it lives up to its name. Uh, it was released today from the fine folks at Turtle Rock, who wanted to not only showcase some of the action-oriented gameplay that really evokes what we saw from them with the Left 4 Dead franchise, but they also introduced a new concept that they're calling the Game Director. And the whole idea with the game director is that you get these cards that mix things up. So there's a huge emphasis on replayability. This is a an asymmetrical cooperative shooter where you have to take down, I think you can tell, a, a lot of zombies. And so the way that they want to mix it up so that you can keep coming back and jump into the maps is they've, uh, you know, borrowed, lifted a page, I guess, from the ultimate team games that uh, EA has been making for a long time. And they've introduced all of these different cards card mechanics that uh, completely sort of change parameters, might give you some uh, melee booths, boosts or some ammunition boosts, might make things a little bit trickier for you. Of course, we'll give you some cosmetic enhancements and some weaponry enhancements. And of course, this also uh, brings with it a tremendous amount of questions because we're all curious about how microtransactions are going to work and the dreaded pay to win is not something that we want to associate with anything, especially Turtle Rock, who is trying to make a big comeback here. They had the Evolve game that didn't do so well for them uh, several years ago, and uh, that was kind of a cool idea, but maybe, uh, you know, the technology just wasn't there. Something wasn't there. It just didn't sort of last long. And so they're trying to go back to what they know best, uh, but they've got a little bit of community building that they've got to do. So they posted a, a statement today in addition to the trailer, and I think one of the big questions is, are you selling individual cards? And what they're going to be doing is launching everything um, for players that want to jump in. Everything is going to be progressive. Progression. You're going to have to earn everything, but then eventually as the game kind of lives out there, they are putting an economy model into the experience so that players can, uh, you know, buy their cosmetic attributes and, and uh, they can earn conceivably lots and lots of money doing things like that, sort of getting you addicted to the core experience, giving you lots of different ways to enjoy the game, and then eventually they're going to find some ways to monetize on the experience. And if they build it right into the into the gameplay right from the get-go, it's not going to be a shock to the system. So, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about the, uh, the card mechanics. It always gives me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies when I see them because we've seen them uh, be abused in some games. But the thing that I always say about this is that the video game industry, yes, there's some sophistication and it moves quickly and it learns quickly and there are billions of dollars being made off of microtransactions, but it is still evolving and it's still trying to figure itself out. We've seen massive, massive corporations make about face U-turns on some of the monetization schemes and decisions that they've made. And I think that uh, Turtle Rock is going into this, um, you know, pretty transparently. And I think at the end of the day, they just want people to love their game. And, it, and that's the core of it. And hopefully Back for Blood delivers. I'll tell you what, man. I mean, this footage, it looks phenomenal. It looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, boy, do we have a lot of targets and lots of interesting beasties coming after us. And, you know, obviously everything is taking advantage of the tech that's available to game platforms and, and enhanced PCs today, too. So it, it should be really pretty and it should be loaded with lots of car and what they're, uh, you know, promising is tons of replayability. We'll find out soon enough. We're also going to find out soon enough how that new Loki TV show is. Marvel dropped a new trailer today, but I think it sort of came on the back of a little bit of a reveal during an NBA game not too long ago where they actually had Tom Hiddleston come out and uh, make a joke about Loki not getting enough attention in the uh, Marvel videos that they put out. But the big news was that, um, and Tom wanted to kind of present this, 
I, I call him Tom because he's a personal friend of mine. No, he's not. Uh, but uh, Tom Hiddleston wanted to kind of say <laughs> that Loki is going to be coming a little bit sooner uh, than we anticipated. It's coming June 9th. So, and the other big change that Marvel is making with the new Loki TV series, they also dropped a little bit of new footage here. A lot of, you know, stuff that we've seen or elements of things that we've seen interspersed in some interesting new ways. But um, the other thing that they're doing with the show is they're going to launch new episodes on Wednesday. So they want to teach us some new habits because, of course, we've been uh, getting used to these Marvel experiences on Fridays. Now they're going to be a couple of days earlier and uh, we don't have that long to wait. June is next month. I hate to break it to you, but we are just racing through 2021. And June is coming up super, super quick. And so is the uh, the new Loki TV show. And it, man, it looks like a blast. It looks like it's got a great sort of comedic slant. And there's going to be some cool special effects. And they're going to be doing some time loops. So conceivably, this will be an interesting way to throw in all kinds of connections to previous MCU stories. I can't wait for Loki. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. And so far, Marvel's doing all right in the TV department. Um, okay, I think what you all clicked on the Play Now button for is Resident Evil Village. I've been playing the game. Let's talk about it a little bit. Now, right out of the gate, I'm going to tell you that this isn't going to be spoilery um, uh, conversation. I'm going to try to stay away from a lot of the secret stuff that I have seen so far. It's also not a definitive review of everything because I'm still playing it. And I actually toyed with the idea of... Uh, cutting this rundown really short so I could get right back to the game. Uh, but you know, this is, the, you know, the full full meal deal rundown. We are going to get into this. Obviously, you're playing as Ethan Winters, who um, uh, has something tragic happen at the beginning of the game, and he goes to uh, this, this uh, village to try to... Um, uh, solve things <laughs> and uh, he gets embroiled in a brand new conspiracy and there's moments in, in the uh, experience which feels like it's almost torture for Ethan uh, uh, Williams because he's got all kinds of people s slamming him around and chaining him up and chasing after him and slicing him and you just you feel like you're a character in Saw for chunks of the game. Uh, but after uh, a, a little while, you get into the action with uh, some pretty cool weaponry. You've got shotguns and assault rifles, and, and it's all first person, just like Resident Evil 7. It's a carryover of the Resident Evil 7 storyline. But of course, what's different now is we've got uh, super powerful machines. I've been playing this on the PlayStation 5, and it is a glorious looking game. For those that checked out the demo, you know what I'm talking about. It's got ray tracing and HDR, and uh, the lighting is absolutely spectacular in here. The RE engine is very robust and very satisfying, and the creature tech and the you know all the animations and things that we see um, are terrifying, uh, but there is a big chunk of the at least the opening stages of the game where you're basically just trying to stay alive you're just basically running it's it almost feels like the resident evil theme park at the beginning of the game and uh, which is fine because i know that tables are you know slowly starting to turn for me on my playthrough but it did feel oppressive it did feel like oh my god this poor guy just all of these awful things just <clears throat> keep happening to him when, when the hell do I get to dole out some damage? And of course, it's a risk-reward system like in any Resident Evil game. You can avoid a lot of the carnage, and you can just do the exploration and the puzzle solving and try to stay away from the beasties and the monsters that are coming out to get you and super giant, uh, you know, creations that you'll see in this thing as well. Um, but, of course, if you do dole out some damage and take them down, you're going to get some uh, great loot and some little pickups like better um, uh, equipment, better weaponry, augments, and things like that. There's also an economy in the game and a, and a really creepy storefront uh, storekeeper that you can negotiate with. And, uh, you know, some questionable uh, acting so far. There's been some great character work, but some, some stuff that hasn't really hit that strongly. Um, but I am sucked in. I am certainly pulled into this experience and I didn't want to stop playing to do this rundown, truth be told. I can't wait to play more and in fact tomorrow I should be able to stream some with you guys in uh, after the rundown. So uh, please come back for that and I'll have some further thoughts because I'm going to be playing it all through the night as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's beautiful, it's creepy, 
Um, and it's got, you know, that sort of stellar production quality that we've come to expect from Capcom. And it also has lots of sort of current gen niceties as well. If you've got the horsepower, the hardware to kind of run it at optimum, you're going to be very, very happy. And if you're a Resident Evil fan, especially if you like Resident Evil 7, I think this is also going to be incredibly satisfying. I do think, though, that if you haven't played Resident Evil 7, this is a bit of a weird one to just jump into. So do yourself a favor and play the exceptional Resident Evil 7, um, which you can also play in VR, and it did feel weird that there was no VR option for RE8 yet, but I suspect that there will be in the future. Uh, but it is fun, man. It is fun, and I can't wait to talk more about it. All right, I've got a couple quick things that I want to tell you about as well. Tony Hawk is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch, as was uh, discussed earlier this year, but it's coming June 23rd to the platform. It's not going to look quite like this. Well, maybe it'll look a little bit like this uh, as it's uh, condensed and compressed through the stream, uh, but this is footage that's kind of pulled from the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 kind of uh, version of the game. But it is beautiful, and honestly, it's all about the gameplay, and there's just so much depth depth and so much replayability in this experience. Really looking forward to checking this thing out again on the Switch and uh, let me know in the comments below if this is something that you are looking forward to. Is this the version that you've been waiting for? Are you a Switch player that has been dying to get some Tony Hawk action on the platform? Well, your, uh, your wish is Activision's command, and it's coming next month. Also, Watch Dogs had some, uh, new, uh, an, uh, a new update, and they introduced a new character, Mina Sadu, who's got some interesting powers. She's got mind control powers, so she can infect different people. And this is for uh, season pass holders in there uh, that, uh, that have got the season pass already, or for people that are buying some of the DLC. You can play as Mina all the way through the game which is kind of cool. So you can play the whole game from start to finish with this new character. And of course, they've enhanced the game with all kinds of great new weaponry. There's a, some new story campaign stuff there for season pass holders. There's um, some new job descriptions on some of the characters that you can take control of because you can, you know, in this game, you can take control of tons and tons of people throughout the, uh, the universe of, uh, of this futuristic uh, dystopian London. And it, I haven't played it in a while, but it was a super fun game with lots of great details and a lot of flash, a lot of sizzle. Um, and, you know, I, when I see this footage, I want to dive back in. But, of course, as I've already mentioned, I'm playing Resident Evil 8 right now, or <laughs> Resident Evil Village. But uh, that's some good news for fans of Watch Dogs. And uh, also, PlayStation wanted to shoot uh, a quick little trailer and a press release to me uh, about a shoe that they've put together with Paul George, NBA player... Uh, Paul George has got a brand new sneaker out there, and it is a PlayStation sneaker. Um, I sent PlayStation my shoe size, so I'm expecting that they're going to send me one of these Paul George PlayStation sneakers. No, they won't. They're going to sell out instantly, but, you know, I thought I would be nice and show you guys what this shoe looks like. It's got the PlayStation 5 kind of color scheme on it and the, the logo on it. Uh, and, th and that'll probably be the only time that you ever get to see one of these things because they're sold out and um, and people that have been, you know, the, the sneaker the sneaker peeps out there that just love stuff like this, they've already bought them all. So there you go. Those are the Paul George PlayStation sneakers. And then finally, one last little bit of news which happened just as I was about to go live with the rundown. Our friends at Housemark revealed that their beloved Returnal, which is getting all kinds of deserved praise around the world, has got some problems with the latest patch. Patch 1.33 has been pulled and we are reverting back to 1.31 until it's fixed. It's supposed to be breaking all kinds of progression and uh, just creating all kinds of havoc. And obviously a lot of people have, and I might ha have this already because I don't, I don't even know if Returnal's on auto-update or not. But if you've got auto-update, you may have screwed your progression in the game, which will make people very unhappy, including me, if that is what has happened. Uh, but Housemark is apologizing, and they're saying that if you have had this happen, you have to re-download the game and, I guess, start over. Um, I'll probably follow up with a little bit more info on that tomorrow, but that's shocking for people that have got the game, have been sort of crawling through it, and now they may have had a lot of progression wiped. Ouch! Because there's still no way to save in the game. The only way to kind of save your progress if you're mid-run is put the PlayStation 5 into rest mode. But I think, pretty certain, Housemark is going to introduce a save game uh, system for this awesome game. Love Returnal. 
All right, you guys, that's going to do it for the rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow with a fresh episode, so please come back for that. Thank you to all of our subscribers out there, and thank you especially to all of our EPN members. We'll see you tomorrow, and until then, play forever. <laughs>